signora. You've not been out of this room since yesterday. Where else should I be? There will be no change in the boy for quite a while. I'll be with him all the time. Why not take a nap? A walk, perhaps. You will feel better. Go on now. Is he going to die, Adam? The doctors say if he wakes up within 24 hours, if he comes out of the coma... And the doctors are lost. And Joshua can't help them. And it all seems incredible. A stranger takes my kid for a joyride, and my vaunted secret service lets it happen. If anyone's to blame, it's me. If I had accepted Joshua, if I had stood at the top of the Capitol stairs and said, that's my kid, that's my kid. Something else would have happened. <sighs> you look exhausted. Go get some sleep. I'll call you the minute there's any news. Joshua's room. Maybe he'll know his mom is there. Marchesa, il signore Boisi. Grazie tanto. Puoi andare? Sì, Marchesa. Want a belt? <laughs> How about a nice bourbon and water? Echo, a real American drink. Personally, I can't stand all that grape crap. Although I'm told that uh, we own 200 acres of the best vineyards in Italy. I'll join you. My late husband left me the vineyards and the shipping lines and 200 pounds of dust covering about 600 priceless paintings. Priceless, but god-awful. Plus almost 100 real relatives, mostly poor, and about 200 others, mostly phony. How's the kid? Not good. You told me on the phone he had a chance. Italian doctors still believe in happy endings. Uh, so did my late husband, Don Marchese. Your husband was reported to be a great man. <laughs> Whoever reported that was on the take. Oh, he was all right, I suppose. 
He didn't have a happy ending. Echo, who does? Nobody dies well. <laughs> the poor Marchese. He seemed so surprised to have to shove off. I think that he figured God owed him overtime. God did reward him on Earth. He allowed him to find you, Marchese. Well, he took me off the streets of New Orleans. <laughs> I turned him on. Like he was never turned on before. <laughs> well, how's the boy's mother doing? She must be a mess. She's holding up. She sounds like a father. He was always bearing up well. God, he was well behaved. <laughs> it was almost eerie. <laughs> so what you think, Boise? I haven't been able to get a straight story all the years I've employed people like you. Is that kid really adopted? I was able to grab a look at some documents. I don't think so. But she did have an affair with that politician. He's the vice president now. Is he the father? No, he's not the father. I've heard him talk. How can you tell? He's too earnest to make babies. He has a daughter. His wife has a daughter. Warner was probably being stalwart at the time. <laughs> you're, you're very suspicious of people, aren't you? Why not? Most of them are here on a pass. Did Warner give her any money? I don't believe she asked for money. What a pair. A thoroughly married politician and a vulnerable, wounded romantic. Mama mia. Well, Boise, you've done a very thorough job and you haven't asked any imbecilic questions. They'll feed you downstairs. If you want to give them a tip, they won't object. Play some more games with my son. You want him carried out of here and put in your latest chariot. Go ahead. He won't give you any trouble. You see, Josh was sleeping. I only gave the boy a ride. He admired my car. We're friends. Friends? You broke into my life. You deliberately gave Joshua the impression that you and I are friends, that we're family. Family, make the word obscene. And you? Who gave you the authority to make judgments on my family? I knew your brother, remember? Oh, I knew your brother too well. Now you get out of here, and you stay away. Stay away from what's left of my family. It's not over. If the boy lives, we all start again. If he doesn't, that's very sad, but nothing changes. You still owe us. Oh, you? You go on! Go on! Business is business. Personal business is personal business. At least it's nicer out here. Even for a hospital, this one is ghastly. All that crippled shrubbery in the halls, all those nurses and doctors murmuring, murmuring. If I was a patient here, I'd spend all my time screeching. What'd you say? <laughs> I was bad enough to die, but I'd have to check out not knowing what anybody is saying. You're quite beautiful. You're a wreck. 
but you're quite beautiful. If you'll excuse me, please, I... Now, my name is Alabrandi, the Marchesa Alabrandi. I live in Tuscany. I'll buy you a drink. There must be a cafe around here. There's always a cafe near hospitals. Nurses, doctors, students, they could never make it without booze and bad food. If you'll excuse me. I'm your mother, for God's sakes. Well, don't look so shocked. Most of us have had mothers at one time or another. It's all right, kid. I don't need money. But you can buy me a drink. And hate me later. So, Mommy, here we are. Goodness, it's been a long time. Let's see. You left me in the crib with enough graham crackers for 25 years and enough love for 20 seconds. You know, it's ridiculous a place like this does not have bourbon. I talked to the boy's doctor. Why? You're really going to make this rough, aren't you? What do you want? Well, I thought I could help with the hospital bills, things like that. I can manage. How did you know about me and the accident? I'm outrageously wealthy. I can afford to have people look in on you from time to time. Anyone I know? Probably. Daddy died, you know. I, I know. He was a very good man. Why did you break his heart? I did your father the biggest favor I ever did anyone. I left him. Too easy. I did leave him you. Even easier. Your dad was a class act, a real class act. And he bored the hell out of me. You're not fit to... How the hell do you know what I was fit for? Listen, kid, I was a pretty joyous girl when I first met. What the hell was his name? I always thought that Abner was a funny name. Go to hell. Been there, didn't like it, left. Just what are you? A working girl who got lucky. Still, you felt you wanted some contact. I wanted to keep an eye on you, believe me, that's all. My, you're beautiful. I mean, you dress like you're sorry about everything, but you are beautiful. God's sake, didn't you even hear a baby crying and all that dirty linen you tossed out? I gave you to your father, who was a nice man and raised you well. I'll be going home tonight. I left my number and address at your hotel, just in case you need me. You look like me, you know. Your father was a nice man, but not very good looking. I fell out of the car. He only had coffee. You adopted a kid, right? You adopted your own kid. You didn't want to disclose the name of the father, right? Don't really blame you. Somebody could get killed with information like that. Shut up.
Yes? Yes, Jennifer. Joshua's back. Thanks, pal. Thanks for hanging around. It'd be awfully stupid without you. Yes. Yes, I understand. <laughs> How sweet. No, nothing more right now. How good of you to call. How really good. Priscilla, if there was one person, one person who never let you sleep a full night, never let you breathe easy, never let you enjoy even a smattering of your life, if there was one person whose very life denies yours, what would you do? Darling, it depends on who. <laughs> You're my closest friend, you must believe that. But darling, if there were one person in the world I wouldn't tell, it would be you. <laughs> darling, at least tell me if it's a man or a woman. Suppose it's a man. I'd probably kill him. And if it was a woman? I'd definitely kill her. Seymour, you amaze me. You're not the everyday tourist. You're not an ordinary anything. Looked interesting. Got sick of reading books about restaurants and churches. Tickets are set. Car picks us up in exactly 16 minutes. Parker lady. When you put her to work? Very soon. The grand jury investigation of Worth is almost complete. What do you think? The vice president was here. I think he'll come around. And then? And then we satisfy Michael. Mr. Colfax wants everything to end when the indictment on Mr. Worth is squashed. Colfax never had a brother. And if he did, he wouldn't know whether he loved him or not. Are we still dealing with that Secret Service man? Warner got rid of him. He'll retire on his pension and all the financial gratitude we're endowing him with. Pretty expensive retirement. Depends on his longevity. Can we pay the bill? I've had enough of room. Where's the luggage? <laughs> so Rome is none of my business. Everything you do is my business. Because we are in business, in business for life. I told you there'd be no unauthorized straying. I handed you a package. You bought it. I bought nothing. Then I misunderstood you. And that is unfortunate. But now there'll be no misunderstanding. There'll be no further contact with that woman. No calls, no shared memories. It's over. It was a tacky indiscretion to begin with, leading to a near disaster for all of us. Adam, you wanted power. You have it. You have this great house. You have secret service men. The president has enormous respect for you. So don't embarrass us, Adam. Don't scurry around like some alley cat with no home, no responsibility, no family, no daughter. You understand? 
If I have to destroy you, I will. You do offer a strong case for obsession, but I've known you all your life. You want more than anyone I know. You go to sleep mumbling more. You wake up screeching more. Mary Beth, you wouldn't put your ass on a satin cushion if you thought it would make the slightest crease. Real family? Who's your real family, Jennifer? Real family? Here's to all brilliant lawyers. So, Jennifer, how do you feel? Strange. <laughs> As well you should. Have some champagne, Mr. Simmons, Miss Delvin. Jeremy Simmons, I work for you. Ah, then drink up. Working for me is a good thing, isn't it, Deke? Oh, it's a very good thing. So, here's two happy endings. Your driver is downstairs, Miss <sighs> Delvin. Forgot the time. We've all been having such fun. Well, Deke and I have to get back to Washington tonight. Goodbye, Mr. Simmons. Don't lose Mr. Simmons, Jennifer. <laughs> Don't know about you, but uh, I feel uh, I've been filed away for future use. <laughs> How much are we paying that loser who comes with Parker? Jeremy Simmons, not all that much. He irritates me. Why? I don't know. He's one of those almosts or could have beens. They can be dangerous. You never know when they're going to break out, kill themselves, or do something heroic. Listen, darling, you go on down to Washington. I can't make the show tonight. Parker Woman has screwed up my day. What about the seats, your seats? Use them. Call one of the girls in the office. Try that tall, intelligent one from the tax department, the one from Yale Law School. I hear she screams pretty good. Ellen Layton screams? She doesn't even know I'm alive. She knows I'm alive. She'll scream. Why this compulsion to set me up with other women? I don't want to be selfish. <laughs> you can leave them with me, Dennis. You're sure? No trouble at all to take them up. Oh, don't bother, lad. It was good enough of you to go shopping with me. I haven't seen you in ages. I'm working two jobs, trying to be the best. We're proud of you, Dennis. Come and see us. Next week. Look forward to it. Excuse me, I'm looking for a restaurant. It's, uh, it's called the Friendly Tiger. Why, Seymour? Why? Why is this Irishman telling Parker? Don't know, Mr. Moretti. Could Thomas be second-guessing me? Look, Mr. Callahan, or Wasi, whatever you call yourself, you're making a filthy afternoon even filthier. We could all be doing something creative or educational. Yeah, yeah, creative, educational. <laughs> Look, all I want to know is why Thomas Colfax has you tagging Jennifer Parker. It's sort of silly. Thomas Colfax and I are partners. Jennifer Parker is looked after. Why is Colfax second-guessing me? Me. His old friend and partner. I don't know Colfax. I promise you. Say to Mother's grave, but I don't know, Mr. Colfax. I don't. <coughs> there is no more time, mate. Now, I don't know how much suffering you've done in your life, but assuming there is no pain you haven't experienced, 
is about to happen to you will be unique. Seymour is a wizard at this sort of thing. On the job training, I think it's called. So, Mr. Callahan, if you don't talk to us about your life with Mr. Colfax, you will spend the rest of your blind time sitting on a wooden platform with your heart sending out signals to limbs that no longer exist. So, chum, who the hell are you? And what is your relationship to my dear friend and colleague, Thomas Fairchild Colfax? <laughs> This beleaguered gentleman may have nothing to do with Colfax. He might even be who he says he is. Come on. See what a highly charged world we live in, mate. We look everywhere for the truth, but in a man's eyes. If we could see your eyes, I'll bet we'd see the truth. I'm sorry, Mr. Callahan. It's OK, sir. No harm done. No result. Mr. Callahan, before we misjudged you, before we made it difficult for you to see, I believe that you did see us. I'm afraid that's unacceptable. Surely you understand that seeing who we are is unacceptable. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Remind me, Seymour, to apologize to Colfax. Your foreman and Delafont. Yes, this is Jennifer Parker. Yes. Adam, you're where? You sound very close. Uh, Joshua's fine. Just fine. No, he's doing very well. Even in arithmetic. No, I've never been there. Adam, I'm not a schoolgirl. I have responsibilities. So do you. I'm sorry. I can't handle this. I can't. Goodbye, Adam. Let's get out of here. We'll listen to some gentle music. Am I crying? I don't see any tears. Not one? Not a single tear. What's left after tears, Jeremy? I don't know. Dignity.
Our people on the scene figure that the grand jury has almost completed its investigation of Jerry Worth. I'm about ready. I don't like the word about. My father used to say you alert a coward too early, you give him time to become a hero. Didn't know your father spoke English. Jim, if we don't reach Warner and his man Haver, we shop elsewhere. Elsewhere's nowhere. I'm the only store that deals in these matters. Then deal, damn it. The longer this case hovers about, the uglier it can get. Stop looking arch, Margot. I told you I move when I feel it right to move. Let's get on with it, Moretti. Jennifer Parker makes me feel uncomfortable. Just old, Margot. The lady is common, a nobody from nowhere. You're not in the same league with Jennifer Parker. Come on, Margot. Why, Jim Moretti? <sighs> You're in love. You've fallen in love with a downstairs maid. <sighs> How droll. I'd kill you, Margot, if you hadn't already died of facelift poisoning. You will kill no one. There will be no independent action in our company. You understand? Of course, Thomas. Excuse my excursions, Margot. I'm known to overreact on social themes, but be assured I never do anything about them. I'm a businessman. I even have cards engraved. Salud. Hey, Jeremy, slow down. We're only going back to the office. I thought we'd go over the Gersten matter. Our postponement's almost up. You did get that postponement. Jeremy, you did get that postponement, didn't you? Taxi. Catherine's gone again, isn't she? Or is she back? I can't tell with you anymore. OK, either way, I'm on your side. But you were supposed to get that postponement. It was a routine matter. Now we're in heavy soup. For God's sake, Jeremy. It slipped my mind. I got involved with this one. That's not a grown-up excuse. Talk to me. I'm your associate, your friend. I'll lay off, will you? I will not lay off. I will not pamper you. You need to be stroked as Father Ryan. Catherine. Hey, you're way out of order, Counselor. Catherine and myself are off limits to you, to everyone. It's our marriage. It's our lousy, misbegotten marriage. Jeremy. Jeremy! Come back! Hey, you want to get killed out of Brooklyn? found him half hour ago, sir. Here's his ID, and uh, we found this. A secret service man with Jennifer Parker's address? That's why we called into your office, sir. Appreciate it. Interesting package, isn't it, Vince? The first report we got was from two drivers in the upper roadway. They saw this guy jump. Did they see anybody with him? No, sir, they say it happened too fast. Yeah. Never heard of a Secret Service man knocking himself off, Mr. DeSalva. Heard they're all very adjusted. There are two reasons why very adjusted people finish themselves. One, they were not that adjusted in the first place. And two, someone else made the decision. Miss Parker. Good morning, Miss Parker. Would you two share one good morning? <laughs> Jeremy's here, and he said to tell you we got the postponement. Oh, great. Would you ask him to come in? He's getting his things together. Oh, 
All right, friend, what the hell do you think you're doing? Moving on. By the way, uh, I got your postponement. Who gets the keys? Johnny, please. Please don't suck your way out of the office, out of my life. Go on, then. Scurry out. Take your battered briefcase to Father Ryan. He'll console you. Yeah, he'll tell you that life is cruel and wives and husbands even crueler. Do you know something, Jeremy? You don't have to go to Father Ryan for that. You can get that sermon right here. Yeah, I guess I can, Jennifer. I don't doubt your expertise in these matters. I suspect you're a card-carrying member of the Heartbreak Club. Anything more? Yeah. There is something more. I might be unraveling, but I'm still trying. You, counselor, you quit. You're not in the fight anymore. You don't bleed, you reminisce. You know what's gonna happen to you, counselor? Tell me, Jeremy. You better tell me. You're gonna grow old gracefully, with witty stories for the old and lots of quotable anecdotes for the young. You're gonna sit around quite safely, remembering, waiting. Your memories of pain are gonna become so distant you won't be able to separate them from a favorite sad book. Yeah, it might be ludicrous, but I'm gonna give it a whirl. You see, I love Catherine. I'll probably get mangled for my efforts. I might end up a suicide or a drunk, but not now. Not yet. Keep the keys. Stay at least until I get back. Until I catch up with my past. Until I earn the right to tell you or anybody anything. Keep the keys. Listen, old campaigner, you called me. That's right. I'm aware of it, Craig. I think you are, too. Listen, chum, if the president wanted Treasury in on this, the secretary would have been in Boston, not me. Well, you want to change policy, go to the president. No, I'm not calling from anywhere. I'm staying with friends, trying to get away from you powerful figures for a few days. <laughs> right. Bye, Craig. I 
still don't believe you're here. You're actually here. What happened to change your mind, Jenny? I don't know. I just needed to see you. I needed to see us. I don't even care why you're here. The fact is, you are. Yes, I am. And I feel strangely at home. <laughs> Whoever said lightning doesn't strike twice. <laughs> I know it's a little late to ask, but whose pad is this, anyway? <laughs> this pad, madam, is what we call le pad de close buddy. What? Lean hideaway owned by a good friend with enough taste to be elsewhere. A long way elsewhere. Was it difficult for you to come up here, Jennifer? Difficult, no. Overwhelming, yes. To see a man I love. To touch a man I love. To sleep with a man I love. It's my turn. What are you thinking about? Really thinking about? I guess you're still the fella. The one who can knock you down and haul you up. The one guy who can prove hearts can be broken. <laughs> can you really remain unnoticed? even on a beach between nowheres? Vice presidents are not celebrities, Jennifer. Unless events bring attention to us, say, during a campaign or a funeral, nobody knows who the hell we are or could care less. I do. Look at them. They're poles twice as long as the two of them. <laughs> Think they'll catch anything? Doesn't matter. They're fishing. And they're free. Great! Great cast! <laughs> Blessed are the children. cities for us to see, so many journeys to share. It's strange, Adam. The places we remember best are the ones we never see.
please remind me where we were? In love. Damn right. to remind you where we were. Where we were is now. What happened? Remember, I told you vice presidents get noticed only at funerals. Well, I'm noticed. I have to leave tomorrow. Chancellor Vial died suddenly. Oh, no. I'll make arrangements for you to get back. Don't worry about me, Adam. I can always get home. I don't even need a note pinned to my blouse. <laughs> oh, Jenny. We still have the night. will be facing DeSalva again the third time this week. He won't let up. And none of these cases were his. The man is obsessed with me. He thinks I'm guilty of everything. He never thought I was legitimate. Marga doesn't like these cases. I'm trying them. She wants to fire me? Let her. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that the words law and courtroom constantly expounded here by Mr. DeSalva appear somewhat more frightening away from your homes and daily lives. But please indulge me for a moment. Let's forget for these few odd seconds that we're in a courtroom, okay? Let's imagine instead that we're sitting around my small living room talking about what's happening to this defendant, our fellow human being. Try to picture yourselves in a quiet place where people of goodwill come together and share the problems of everyday life. Yes. Everyday but the jury, life. those life with people. idiots are yes. in Parker's living room. Life Look with at them. heart. They've forgotten the whole damn case. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, for a little while anyway, I would like you to forget that you're in a court of law. Strange request from the office of district attorney, but indulge me for a few seconds. Imagine, if you will, that you're sitting at home in my living room. And we're just chatting informally as friends. Loss is stealing your stuff. So he is. How dare he tell you to forget you're sitting in a court of law? Perhaps Mr. DeSalvo would have you believe you're at a ball game eating hot dogs or at a racetrack, placing bets for his staff. So I'm asking you, ladies and gentlemen, to remember, to remember where you are, and to remember that all of us are here to see that justice is done, and that the defendant is vindicated in a courtroom. Parker has learned a lot from you, Chief. And me? That lousy two-bit. You see what she did to that jury? Chief, you have taught us some of the finer aspects. I don't teach finer. I teach Jennifer Parker yet. Be like teaching a piranha to eat slowly. Why, Mr. DeSalva, you're upset. 
Now, who upset our imminent district attorney? Our client winning? Don't think so. The pressure of the job. Maybe. Maybe, but doubtful. Listen, Broad. Listen, Broad? It's women, Jeremy. There's the clue. Mr. DeSalva has trouble with women, or as he refers to them, broads. Mr. DeSalva has been happily married for years. Mr. DeSalva has, but does anyone ask his wife? Let's get out of here, Ben. How many cards do you want? I only need one card going inside straight. Dealer takes two. Okay. Now, what do you people think you're doing? The nice ladies teach me to play poker. Your kid has possibilities. Father Ryan, I'd like to see you up here. And I'll have a conference with you later, Mrs. Mackey. Me too. When did she contact you? About a week ago. She said she had business in Cleveland and wanted to stop off in New York. How did she know about you? She follows things. You know, of course, that she's Joshua's grandmother. Oh. oh don't be so clever. What did she tell Joshua? Only that she's a friend. Well, that's something anyway. Your mother. You know, Joshua has really taken to her. He invited her to supper. That's all right. She can't stay. She said she's too jet-lagged to be hungry. She probably drank all the way from Rome. Your kid is adding up the score. I guess you two are doing the same. You get worse and worse. To teach a child poker at his age. The kid tells me he's playing baseball again. You know, it's strange coming back to the States. It's been many years. Most everyone I knew is dead. The few that are alive should be dead. <laughs> Father Ryan, don't laugh at her. Don't encourage her. She loves to be outrageous. You should get married. You should have more babies. You make nice kids. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I did hear that you and the politician are over. You hear everything, don't you? You can do better than the politician. Be patient. I waited. I did better. Get the hell out of here. Now, that part of you, I like. No. I can't really stay. I've got a car outside, and the driver's probably starved. I'll call you before I leave. I'll be at the plaza if you... You know, that is such a habit, such a sentimental, ridiculous habit, telling people where you are in case they need you. Me of all people. I guess I'm about 20 years late. Echo. So I'll be at the plaza if you need me. Oh, by the way, all the way from Rome, I tried to remember your father's first name. Abner. Of course. I knew it was something ridiculous. I'm not saying a word. Not a single, solitary word. But she is your mother. Ryan. I'm not saying anything. But after all, Jennifer, she is your mother. Oh, Ryan, I tried. I did, but she's... She's your mother. You'll have to cut a deal. I don't have to do anything. I'll get it. Thank you.
Sweetheart, until now, your problems have been confined to stretch limos and satin adultery. But there's a bill. There's always a bill. And if we don't pay? Exposure. I like Joshua. By the way, what's his last name? You bastard. Lady, we are now into overtime, and people are getting very nervous. You will close the deal with Warner, and you will give him this. If you don't give it to him, you will go over. On my brother's grave, you will go over. You're in bed with the devil. Enjoy. Mr. Vice President. What? What time is it? It's 1 a.m., sir. Is everything all right? Is the president... The president is fine. Would you take a call? What? A call, sir. I've been trying to reach you all day, Adam. I must see you. I don't know when. I'm stuck in Washington for a few days. There are two tight votes in the Senate. I may be called upon to cast a tiebreaker. Adam. I have to see you. I wouldn't ask if it weren't... All right, I'll tell you what. I'm coming up to New York. Uh, I'm addressing the annual dinner of the National Conference on the Arts. I, I can't see you there. Every name in America will be storming in. Perfect. Big crowds, less notice. I'll leave a pair of tickets, bring someone. You'll be noticed less. Between cocktails, dinner, and speech making, I'll have arranged something. We must meet. Okay, Jennifer. Five other events here. Nothing stops wedding receptions, bar mitzvahs, or college reunions. Give these steps to your waiter. Please give these steps to your waiter at dinner, Father. Bet you it'll be stuffed chicken and mashed potatoes. Why not? Bye. Yes, thank you. 
look lovely tonight, Miss Parker. Very lawyer-like. You're doing all right, Jennifer. You're doing just fine. Look at Parker. A mask of innocence. Mr. Parker. I would have met you soon. I understand. Ever since we were together. I know, one funeral after another. Sorry, Adam, I'm, I'm not here for reminiscing. What are you here for? Absolutely incredible that Moretti's people think I would even consider asking the deputy attorney general to squash an indictment that I would ask a friend. It's because he's your friend, Adam. They know he owes his job to you. I did not recommend Arlen Haber to the president because he's a friend of mine. The man is a brilliant lawyer. Moretti said no one would criticize Haber if he decided not to proceed. He, he seems so confident. They think one word from me to you can solve their problem. Jennifer, they'll pull everything down. That's what they'll do. Those kinds of people don't just threaten blackmail. So the hyenas have come down from the hills, eh, Jenny? Well, let them. I say no, and no, and no. Adam, I knew it. I knew it. Don't you touch my husband, you whore. Mary Beth. Whatever the circumstances, whatever I mean, whatever the conflicts the three of us have, we're in this together. We have a common we purpose. We have nothing in common. Mary Beth, will you listen? We're being blackmailed. Some people know about... Jennifer and you. And... a boy. Named what, Miss Parker? It had to leak out. I warned you, you silly sophomore. I warned you. It's too late for recriminations, Mrs. Warner. If you want apologies, I'll give you all you want. But right now, Adam must save him. Must save what? I'll tell you what he's going to save. He's going to save his daughter, me, his career. That's what he's going to save. Mary Beth, you don't uh, understand. Moretti knows who Joshua's father is. They're asking for a deal. They want me to squash an indictment against a super crook named Jerry Worth. Now do you understand? They want me to make a deal. For God's sakes, Adam. Who benefits if you don't make a deal? Who? So another hustler gets off, who cares? Every day, people get away with things. But still, the system works. Every second of history, there's a certain amount of dirty pool, yet the system works. Every day, somebody bends the law, yet the system works. What system? You have no standing in this court. We tell them it's a one-time sale, one time. If they come back for more, public servants are vulnerable, granted, but we can move in awesome ways. Those people know that they won't be back again.
Harry Beth does make some interesting points. Not that I necessarily agree with all of them, but there are complex issues here. And what are they? Adam, there are 500 people waiting to hear you speak. Jennifer, trust me, I'll do the right thing. I always have. And I do have you and the boy to think of. Noah. Don't call him. Call him, Adam. Given the traditional priorities of human needs, peace, food, health, and education must be placed at the top. Yet without art, there is ultimately nothing. True, we can have peace, full bellies, great hospitals, even the prolongation of life leap out of solar systems and find infinity itself. But still, in the secret heart of all of us, the eyes behind the eyes of all of us, the inner ear of all of us, aren't we all searching for some elusive theme, a piece of music just the other side of our hearts? Aren't our ears picking up phrases, a rhythm, a tall story that hangs around the house like an old friend? Aren't there gentle reminders of early days when we all cared so much that nothing else really seemed to matter? Isn't there some fragment of beauty that makes us feel that even if the stars no longer look down, we have the strength to look up? did well, James. I told you, Worth will not be touched. That's the first time I ever spoke to a vice president. He sounded like a pompous squid. He'll sound worse one day soon. Why not take a vacation, James? You deserve it. You need a holiday. Don't stand in shadow, Seymour. You make people nervous being innocuous. Come in, come in. Thank you, Mr. Colfax. So how about a vacation, James? The company will pick up the tab. There's still my brother, Michael. There's still unfinished business with Warner. Your brother is dead, Jim. Don't muddle things up. It's not good. Want a drink, Seymour?
enjoy Warner's speech? Still thinking about it. Warner is a powerful speaker. That's good. Do you have any trouble getting in? No. I always like having a man on the inside. I enjoyed myself. You really thinking about finishing Warner and the Parker lady? I never thought of anything else. I guess if it was my brother, I'd be just as crazy. Want to come up for a drink? I'm too excited to sleep. Sure. Seymour, how about some champagne, huh? Just some soda water, please. Come on, this is an occasion. Soda water? Well, how about some ice? Huh? What the hell is this? You don't kill the vice president, Mr. Moretti. It's not right. You filthy. Why? It's wrong, Mr. Moretti. It is wrong to kill the vice president. Even Mr. Colfax says it's wrong. Even Mr. Colfax. Colfax, you work for me, you crazy bastard. We both work for Colfax. It's not right. To kill the vice president, Mr. Moretti. his hair anymore. Keep it down, Jerry. Don't howl at me. You promised me. I believed you. You took out Moretti. You burned your own private hitman before he squashed my indictment. Why? Moretti went psycho on us. He wanted to blow away Adam Warner afterwards. I don't care what happens to Adam Warner afterwards. Oh, you don't? Well, we do. Killing a vice president. Moretti could have pulled us all down, the whole organization. Of which you are a major part, Jerry. Don't be a diplomat, Margot. It brings out the slut in you. Listen, Will. Shut it I off, have... Margot. Jerry, Moretti had to go. What about me? You thought the assassination of Adam Warner would bring the organization down. You don't know the meaning of down. I'm indicted. You'll see down. You see down so far that a hole in a swamp will look like heaven to you. Jerry, we're not going down, and neither are you. You think we're stupid enough to count on only Jim Moretti's blackmail? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're stupid enough. I was. That's very generous of you. But don't aggravate me. Jerry, you will not be indicted. I give you my word. The company's word. Now, we've been together a long time. I've never walked on your lawn. I've never ruffled uh, any one of your splendid feathers, hmm? Then don't begin. You remind him, Margot. Remind him who I am. I know who you are, Jerry. 
Remind him, Margot. He could take us down. So remind me, Margot. Remind me who Jerry Worth is. And on a local note, the death of Jerome Worth at 59 came as a big shock to the power brokers of this city and elsewhere. Worth apparently was killed by a hit and run driver as he left his house late this afternoon. Worth was reported to be in some difficulty with various branches of the government. Always a colorful figure, Worth had a dazzling array of friends. So it's over, Adam. It's all over. Nothing more will happen. There'll be no further attempt to influence you. With Moretti's death and now with Worth gone, they have nothing. And they don't need anything. They've had a happy ending, and so have we. You understand, Mary Beth, I never intended to make a deal. I never said I'd contact anyone at the Justice Department. I never agreed to anything. Of course you didn't. Darling, it's all right to call Jennifer Parker. You will anyway. But do let her know that her problem with fathers and sons is over. Tell her she can live quietly. Tell her to live quietly. Understand. Call her, Adam. It's fine with me. Margot Delafont was up to her neck in the whole filthy mess. So I'm going to take my little diploma in four pictures back to a little office with a little window, and along with Jeremy, practice a little law. That's what I'm going to do. And you feel OK about Jeremy? His work is superb, and Catherine's home. I hope she stays. I pray she will. But Jeremy will wait for her no matter. I, there's nothing to be done about that. Guess who's back? Where's Mrs. Murphy? She stopped to do some shopping. Ciao, Padre. Ciao. I'm exhausted just getting that kid to school. Why am I explaining things to you? You know, in Italy, you see a priest and you start explaining. <laughs> <laughs> ah, your kid wants the whole world explained to him before he goes one block. Echo, who does he think he is? A six-year-old boy who looks around. <laughs> you OK? What's wrong? Yeah, I, um, you're so solicitous. Last week, you hated me. That was a week ago. I'm as fickle as you are. Sure you're OK? Yeah. I'll get you a glass of water. Hello? Oh. Yeah. I'll take this call in my bedroom. When you hear my voice, please hang up. It wouldn't occur to me to do anything else. Father Ryan, would you get Marquesa a glass of water? Nothing in it. Ah, Padre. <clears throat> nope. Who was it? Wrong number. Thank you.
it's tiny. I shouldn't have. How ill are you? So that's why you came home. You gonna tell Jennifer? You crazy? All these years and I'm gonna play along, look after dear old mum's scene with a daughter I barely know? Depress a child who thinks of me as a funny card shark? No. Listen, I'm a little bourbon from time to time. And my big mouth, they won't even know I've got a cold. What do you plan to do? Oh, a little of this, little of that. I've got money, you know. She gonna stay away from that Warner fella? You listened. Who needs to listen? Ryan, I barely know Jennifer, but I know women. There is a look. You okay? Sure. Sure. Well, I'm off. Clara coming to pick me up. You'll be back. Joshua, don't let him play poker. It's not for him. That kid gets a thought and it's all over his face. Jennifer, I'm not gonna say it's none of my business because that sort of politeness is against my religion. But, damn right, but. No, I'm not going to see the politician. Good. You can vote for him, but nothing else. <laughs> nothing else. Where's your father buried anyway? Marigold Cemetery, Kelso, Washington State. Why? I thought I'd say hello. He was a nice man. And he brought you up well. I'd like to thank him. By the way, what name does he go by in that place? Abner, damn it. Abner Parker. Abner. You know, it's got kind of a nice ring to it, Abner. Let's try to see that it's not forgotten. Marquesa did not teach you how to cheat. Yes, she did. <laughs> Hi! There's that terrific man! Oh! It's okay, Mrs. Maggie. You gotta stay for supper this time. Oh. Joshua. Go and finish your game with Mrs. Mackey. We good. She owes me $1,000. Oh, then give her the chance to win it back, Josh. That's the gentlemanly thing to do. OK, but don't you go away. How do we settle this on the phone? Well, help me anyway, Jennifer. I'm stuck. Been rehearsing all morning. So you knew I'd be here? Joshua's man. Always. Oh, Jennifer. Tell me to make a run for it. Tell me to tell them all to go to hell. Tell me to tell them I'm resigning. Why resign, Adam? I'd have to. I couldn't stay in office. Divorce Mary Beth? Marry me? Acknowledge your son. Oh, poor Adam. You equate me with disgrace. 
Jenny. That's not what I meant. Of course it is. You see yourself as a martyr to love, a political unit wandering around the world with me and Joshua, telling anybody you can what you sacrificed for true love. Jennifer, that's a terrible portrait. Adam, we've both been unfaithful. You to Mary Beth, your daughter, your position, me. So have I. I've been unfaithful to my life. A friend of mine called me on it, and he was right. I've used our love as a substitute for living. I love you. I love you now. That's, that's a fact. But my love has to become irrelevant. Irrelevant to growing up and moving on. Tell me, what can I say? What should I say to keep you? Tell me, Jennifer, okay? I need you to tell me that there's no future for us. Only a present. But you can't do that, can you, Adam? Then you tell me what will happen to you without me. Can you make it? I sure as hell am going to try. <laughs> oh, I'm going to bleed a lot. I'm, I'm going to bleed all over my best rugs, but I won't die from it. And I'm not staying retired any longer. I insist on hanging around for a long time. What about our son? One day, Joshua will have to figure that out for himself. I hope he's considerate and understanding of his parents who will not grow old together. I hope he understands. That's the greatest loss of all. Hey, look! They're getting ready to dance! They look so funny! Tell them that's a hurry! Be right there, Joshua. Let anybody frighten you again. You're too tall. And I guess it does stop there. About time, pal. Hey, they're starting all kinds of stuff over there. What? 